Well, to the other crisis just mentioned in my conversation there, Russia and Ukraine are trading blames on each other over alleged drone strikes which sparked fire at the Zaporizhia nuclear power plants. According to Zaporizhia's Kremlin installed governor Yevgeny Balitsky, the Sunday incident was caused by Ukrainian shelling. He called for calm, adding that there had been no radiation spike around the plants. On the other hand, Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky says Russian forces started the fire at the plant, also indicating there was no danger of a nuclear leak. Meanwhile, the International Atomic Energy Agency says its experts had witnessed strong dark smoke coming from the plants following multiple explosions. The nuclear power plant has been under the control of Russian troops and officials since 2022. It has not produced power in more than two years and all six reactors have been in cold shutdown since April. Now, after days of silence, Ukraine has finally acknowledged it made a cross-border incursion in the Russian region of Kursk. This disclosure was made by the Ukrainian president himself over the weekend in his usual nightly video address. Mr. Zelensky said his troops are pushing the war into what he called the aggressor's territory, and will leave no part of the front line unattended. His comments come after Ukrainian troops launched a surprise incursion into the regions in Moscow last Tuesday, the deepest raid the war has seen since it began in February 2022. I'd like to commend all our warriors for the combat brigades, which are highly effective in defending our country and destroying the occupier. We leave no part of the front unattended. Commander-in-Chief Sirsky has already reported several times on the front-line situation and our actions to push the war out into the aggressor's territory. Ukraine is proving that it really knows how to restore justice and guarantees exactly the kind of pressure that is needed. Pressure on the aggressor. But how is Russia responding to all of this? Its President Vladimir Putin has held an emergency meeting with officials over Ukraine's offensive. Mr. Putin said Ukraine is trying to undermine Russian stability, but they will not succeed. He accused Ukraine of indiscriminately targeting civilians. He adds that Kyiv will receive a worthy response and there's no doubt all objectives will be reached. Authorities say the situation in Kursk region remains difficult as Ukraine now controls 28 villages in the region. Speaking of the incursion, Russia has issued new evacuation orders in the Belgorod and Kursk region as Ukraine continues its surprise week-long offensive. So far, more than 121,000 people have fled Kursk, where a state of emergency has been declared by authorities. Its governor, Alexei Smirnov, says a total civilian death toll of 12 has been recorded since the incursion began and at least 21, 121 others injured. In the Belgorod region, which is south of Kursk, some 11,000 people have been forced to flee as the area is also under missile alert. According to Ukrainian officials, thousands of troops are engaged in the operation, described as the biggest coordinated attack on Russian territory. On Sunday, Russia published this footage showing that it claimed where its claims were strikes, uh, where, what it claimed were strikes on Ukrainian armored vehicles loitering in the border area of Kursk. The Russian ministry stated that intelligence specialists had detected the Ukrainian armored vehicles used to hit three units. The system itself gives a missile the capabilities of a drone, allowing it to loiter in the area until the target is located before hitting it. Let's get more on this. The VOA's Anna Shanikova joins us now from Kiev. Hi, Anna. Um, let's begin with the cross-border incursion by Ukraine into Russia. 
Why did it take so long for President Zelensky to acknowledge this offensive? Uh, good evening. Uh, well, actually, um, as you correctly said, it was a very surprise, uh, su surpri a big surprise for everyone here in Ukraine as well, not just international community and uh, uh, Ukrainian authorities indeed did not uh, even give any hints, did not confirm for a long time. And this could be explained by the fact that um, Ukraine already experienced uh, a failure uh, during uh, d d d during the uh, s such a long expected uh, counter offensive uh, in 2023, and uh, uh, a lot of information was leaked uh, in advance before the operation. And uh, it looks like that Ukrainian authorities decided that this time they will uh, keep a silence uh, until it is possible to keep the silence. Uh, uh, and, uh, well, th such tactics could be understanding, uh, understandable because, well, uh, Ukraine uh, wanted to keep this unexpected the moment. Uh, and uh, as a lot of experts here inside the country uh, believe that uh, it was quite difficult in, in the condition of 21st century war, uh, and, uh, you know, satellite images, uh, intelligence uh, work, uh, very act active work uh, to keep such operation silent and keep it uh, and make it unexpected. Uh, so, well, this is probably the reason why uh, no one commented uh, on this uh, and no one said anything at all. And how much of a win uh, could you say this is for Ukraine? Um, I should say that uh, for... Well, for probably almost a year now, uh, it was quite, uh, situation at the front line was not changing. Uh, situation in Ukraine was uh, uh, stable and difficult. Uh, so the difficult stability, this is probably how I could describe the situation. And of course, um, for people, it was uh, difficult, not only physically, but also emotionally. And, um, uh, and also a lot of experts here inside the country uh, believe that in order to have a chance to finish this war in, in, in the 2020s, uh, before 2030 comes, um, and uh, in general, just to make, uh, you know, j j just to make it possible for the sides to uh, to sit down for negotiations or to stop hostilities, um, war should be also on the territory of Russia, because if it remains only on the territory of Ukraine, um, possibility for negotiations, again, according to experts, uh, um, so possibility for negotiations is really uh, far, far away. And, uh, uh, and people were, you know, Ukrainians are living in such informational bubble, I mean, informational um, narrative uh, for a long time so uh, no good news from the front line N no really much news from the front line russian forces are bigger My, um, russian forces have more equipment uh, and uh, uh, russian forces are concentrated uh, in the areas uh, where uh, the the most tough uh, hostilities are taking place and uh, step by step very slowly but russian forces advance in certain areas and this is what and shelling, really heavy shelling continue, very, a lot of problems with energy infrastructure and energy in, in general. And uh, uh, Ukrainians were actually living in this, you know, negative narr narrative for a long time. Now, uh, this uh, Kursk operation, well, uh, for a couple of days, no one really believed this is happening. Uh, for probably a couple of days, no, uh, everyone were waiting actually for confirmation and waiting for at least uh, even e even non-official confirmation from the military, for instance, that actually this is the case because um, in Ukraine it was perceived at first, well, very carefully because, you know, no one understands if this is um, uh, propaganda or if this is uh, just Russian news coming in. So. It was really, really difficult to observe for Ukrainians. But then at one point, I think that it looks now like certain, you know, for Ukrainians that uh, this is a little bit, you know, back to uh, of fairness because uh, not only Ukrainians are suffering from 
the aggression that, that Ukrainians did not start, but also the side that started this aggression actually also feels that war is happening. And do you, Ukrainians officials think this surprise raid into the Kursk region would get Russia on its knees or it will keep Russia on its toes, I beg your pardon? Um, well, um, it's interesting because, you know, no one knows how all this will evolve and if Ukrainian forces will be able to keep the positions they've taken, to keep the territories and settlements they've taken. Uh, just couple, uh, just, just around, uh, about a half an hour ago, uh, Oleksandr Sirsky, commander-in-chief of the armed forces of Ukraine, reported to Vladimir Zelensky, uh, the president of Ukraine, that Ukrainian forces control 1,000 square kilometers. And uh, it looks like Russian forces are controlling the gas, uh, uh, gas transferring st uh, transporting station. And it looks like Ukrainian forces are kind of uh, aiming for Kursk nuclear power plant, at least if we look at the map. So, uh, and from Russian, you know, side, uh, it's really, you know, um, it looks like quite a failure for intelligence of the Russian Federation and also for the border forces, because um, according to information which is available, of course, it's not confirmed officially, but it looks like realistic. A lot of international sources are uh, saying this and experts that um, Ukrainian forces uh, should be around 10,000 people uh, in, involved in this operation. And basically, Russian armed forces were not able to stop and we're not able to able to even predict this happening and uh, uh, actually prepare for this happening. So, again, we will see how all this evolves and what is the main goal for Ukraine, because also it's not clear yet, uh, but uh, what experts and what here inside the country, what everyone agree on is that this is definitely uh, one of the goals is to uh, to take uh, Russian troops from the, mo the hottest hostility spots on the territory of Ukraine and the occupied territories uh, in the eastern front line uh, where Russian forces are uh, preparing for new offensive and actually continue the previous ones and uh, advance uh, where the concentration of forces is the most, uh, but also and also to create a precedent that well, uh, Russia actually was uh, Russian uh, border was crossed and Ukrainian forces are controlling part of, part of the territory now, which never happened. Well, never ha happened before, uh, j just in the Second World War last time when Russian territory was actually when the border was crossed and Russian territory was uh, uh, in crossed. Anna, thank you again.